I got uh, the transom set up. All right, Luke, where you went the stake? A right, right there. Right there, yep, got it. Yep, all right, now go back to Tony. All right. Tony, a little to the right. Yep, yep, right there, perfect. So that's gonna be the back left corner of the house. JR, what's the grade difference between the front and the, and the back? Right at two feet. Two feet, all right, we got it marked, thanks. Awesome, let's go this way. You know, Lonnie, every subdivision or every piece of ground starts with a plan or a plat. It does. You know, this is Brownstone subdivision, and in the first section we had 50 homes. Now we're getting ready to put in another 40 lots for our section two, and it, it's very important that we get these lots on grade and use the right equipment. It is. Now, what's that hill back there? Well, that's actually ground that we're going to need. You know, we try to balance the soil. It's very important that we get the, get the top topography right in these areas and the grade right, so we're going to use that for the street in the next section. Okay. And speaking of streets and topographies and getting things right, this is a transit that Luke's using. Explain that, Luke. Oh, it's so critical, Lonnie. So what this does is it broadcasts the laser across the ground here, and then this can read that. And as I drop it, you'll hear that beep. That means I'm level with that. So this will tell us how far that grade falls or rises, uh, and then we can either design the house around it or come in with the right equipment and level that out. Very critical. And this is so critical when it comes to driveway slopes and also managing water, rainwater around your home to use the right equipment and the right people to get it done right. Mm -hmm. Okay, Kayla, now I got a question. This is an empty frame. Why would you have me bring this empty frame on this particular lot? Well, of course, it's so hard to visualize everything, and so we want to make sure that with this frame, people can really capture their view, and it's so great to be able to bring this out for clients because it really uh, it frames the whole picture, of course. This is a massive secret to Granite Ridge with this. Now, you invented this frame. Tell me why. Well, it's a magic frame. It goes from something like this. We say, picture this, and then I can say, picture this. Ooh. Whoa! That was awesome. That is awesome. How do you do that? Well, I, I can't tell you, but man, it is so hot out here today. I'm telling you, we're going to need some handkerchiefs by the end of the day. So you guys be it's, careful there. How do you do that? One more. Man, I like uh, this picture. Anyway, wait, you shades. have to explain this picture thing to me one more time. How in the world can you do that? Welcome to Between the Studs. We are Granite Ridge Builders, custom builders serving northern Indiana, northwest Ohio, and also parts of southern Michigan. We have been building custom homes for almost two decades, and we're really passionate about what we do. So join us today as we explore the processes, the trends, and also tips that characterize today's new home. Thanks for watching. This new model is amazing. I love it. The modern farmhouse is trending so well. I totally agree. I mean, the white and the black, everybody loves it so much. So I think this was a really good one. But in the meantime, I think they're getting ready and finished putting the finishing touches on it. We better start the show. If we don't pull them around, they will piddle forever. You're, you're right. Come on, guys. Hey, let's... hey, come on. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> So today, you know, to get to this finished product, I think it's so important to talk about the process to get here because I think a lot of people think that it is it is complicated and overwhelming, but here at Granite Ridge, we make it so easy for people to get this beautiful home. And I think that's what we should do for you today is kind of give you an idea of how this whole process works, a little step by step, and how exactly should we do that? You know what, you, we're standing at one of our finished projects. We're gonna take you from the very, very beginning of the lot and show you how in eight steps we get here in a short amount of time. So we're gonna call this the construction process made easy. Absolutely. Wow. You know, for a lot of people, building a home is like a confusing puzzle, but it really ought to be seen as a process or processes and stages. And today we're gonna to talk about them, like putting in the foundation, framing the home, what goes between the studs. Ooh, like that part. All <laughs> kinds of things today, so stay tuned. Well, you know, one thing that I think makes it easy is photography, pictures. Everyone loves that. It's what they say. A picture is worth a thousand words. In construction, it's probably 10,000 words. And we probably do that as well as anybody all the way through the process. And Tony, we've got the best way possible to share all of those photos with our homeowners, and that's called Builder Trends. So they're going to have yep. three, four, five hundred photos all the way through their home that they can keep forever. So I can stay in my office and watch you build the house if I even didn't even come out there. As easy as you can possibly make it. I like this. And guys, we really pride ourselves on that builder trend. We try to make, make it so the homeowners feel like they're part of this process. Mm -hmm. And we shared not only those photos, but we share the schedule, we give oh. daily logs with them. And not only does it share it with them, they can choose to share that with their family and friends. It shares it with their other Granite Ridge team members. And so everybody stays up to date on that build site. So communication's a key. Yep. Mm -hmm. I love the process of the final touches, the big things like your cabinets, your flooring, seeing all of that come together in your home. 
And to, to, the best way, I think, to, to show this is still, you know, like a little bit of magic. Uh -oh. And so we always say that. Again, hey, I'm here <laughs> that you just take something just as simple as this, and that's kind of the blank slate that we have when you start off on a project. And then we get the framing and things like that, and you start to see a little bit of what's going on. And with those finishing touches, man, I tell you, it really does bring it together. And boom, wow. you've got a completed home, and we want to show you that whole process today. Well, I'm excited. Let's get started with step one. Let's head over to a bear lot. We'll go. Wait, okay. you, you got to show off how you hug <laughs> every time. This is, this is really good. Good. This is, I never share my secrets. So, Luke, what you're telling me is this transit shoots a laser beam to this stick and that tells us something about the elevation. Yeah, it huh? tells us how level the ground is or, or how high it might rise or fall across the lot. So, and that's really important. You know, my day, we used our thumb. We kind of went like this and said, okay, that's good <laughs> we, right there. We've come a long way since Ooh, then. <laughs> very important. I, I can see that's very important. You know, when, when Granite Ridge starts a home, it's critical that we get the elevation of the home correct and really look at the lot. And we've got a guy that does that. Yeah, before we even get to the start where we break ground on the lot, we have a guy who is dedicated to go out with clients and look at a piece of ground and see how it fits with the house that they're wanting to build and what maybe surprises there would be or, you know, what challenges we might have to overcome in order to make that lot exactly what they're looking for. Because again, this is really important. Not only does he look at other lots, but he looks at Granite Ridge owned lots as well. Yeah, he tries to eliminate any surprises and set the expectation of like how well you're going to be able to see the pond or how steep your driveway might be. Yeah, everybody's concerned about how steep their driveway is going to be. And we're concerned about that too, but we're also concerned about water management, right? Yeah, this is probably the most crucial step is getting that elevation set right. You don't want to be too high where you get a steep driveway and then you're dumping all the water onto your neighbors. And you don't want to be too low where all the water is collecting around your house. Uh, in my opinion, water is the most dangerous is, element yeah. to a home, whether it be a slab or a basement. So once we've determined the, 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 the topography of the lot and the elevation we want to be at, then we are going to bench the lot. And explain benching. Yeah, so a benching just means that we're coming in and we're going to carve in a nice level pad is what we call it. Use a dozer yep, or a maybe dozer. A, a bobcat or something. Yep, okay. yep. Uh -huh. And then we need to get all that vegetation off. So we need the weeds that have been growing there. We need to scrape all those off because those are organic material and those are still decomposing. So we need to get down to either sand or clay in our area. Then we can build a house up from there and not worry about anything decomposing under our houses. So we bench, then we're going to come out and we're going to pin the lot, which is staking the, what, the footprint of the house. Yeah, the footprint of the house. So you can almost in your mind connect all the dots and you'll see every corner and every nook and cranny of that elevation of the, the floor, floor plan. And by now we've got the permits and now we're gonna dig the basement or we're gonna trench the footer for the slab. And Lonnie, speaking of, of slabs, they're pouring that already and I think Ooh. you're due over there. So you don't wanna miss those concrete print. trucks. I yeah. get my hand get, print in the Write your name in there. Hey Jonas, can what? I put my hand print in this no. thing? No. 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 Lonnie, you don't even have an end to that. You don't have the right shoes on, Lonnie. All right, well. Hey, what thanks, Jonas. Keep working. Right. Keep working. Wow. Wow. Who are you trying to teach me there? <laughs> hey, this process is all about the slab or the concrete side of things. We've prepared the lot. Right. And now we've brought in guys to do an, most important, one of the most important jobs one could do. It's about the foundation. Let's talk about it. You know, right now we're seeing this at almost the very end stage of the house. When they're doing the driveway and the sidewalks, that's one of the final things that they do. But we're going to take you all the way back to the beginning. You just got done talking about the lots and preparing the land. Now it's time to prepare for the slab. Right. And by the way, on this driveway, which they're pouring right now, they've had to, it takes four or five people, a team, to it really does. do it. Once they've poured that concrete, they've screeded it, they've used the bull float, as we call it, to make that surface smooth and also to work some of the air out of it and moisture out of it. And we're going to have a beautiful driveway when we get done here in just, just about a week, 10 days, you can get on it. Now, the nice thing about anything when it comes to the concrete and the concrete slab, everyone just sees the final product and they think that that's just, you know, poof, it's no, done. There's no. a lot of stages that go into this, really from the very beginning when you're putting a boarding almost around the entire area. Right. In our area, when we do a slab, we typically have a trench footer that's at least 36 inches under right. the, the earth. That's where our frost line begins. So there is a footer poured. It's concrete. And then it's formed up with yep. form boards, yep. and we put stone in between the, the footer. To, and what do we do then, Tony? You know, we've got all this stone in here, and then we start doing some of the other mechanical things in, inside the slab itself. We're putting in some of the heating ducts, we're putting in some electrical in some cases, we're putting in plumbing, and then we're putting all more stone on top of all that to cover it up, 
and then we're almost putting like a wire mesh on top of right. that. That wire mesh is very important. And all these things are inspected, and we're talking about a, a time frame of roughly 10 days to two weeks to get to that point, and then we pour the slab. Right, and then we're gonna pour everything up there and then that slab needs to sit a couple of days before we start putting some wood At on there for that. At least a couple of days, depending on the time frame oh, of the I year. Oh, I think we're getting in right. somebody's way right Whoa. here. I love trucks. Well, when we're talking about the construction process, we also have to talk about all the construction equipment that is gonna come out to the job site. There are more pieces of equipment than I can even think about, but it's nice that Granite Ridge coordinates all of that. And I have to say that I don't even know if I know all the names of them, but my boys sure do. I have two young boys and they are absolutely fluid with the terminology of all the different kinds of equipment that comes out to houses, because they love to watch. I agree, I have two boys too. Bobcats, skid loaders, bulldozers. I don't know, there's a lot when it comes into the cement mixer. Absolutely. A lot when it comes into building your new home. You know, if you want to come out, uh, we live in a subdivision that's brand new and our boys like to just sit out there all day and watch the construction happen. And so they're going to be construction workers for life just by all the stuff that's around us. And that's what makes the Granite Ridge process of building homes so much fun. This is framing, and if you've never seen a house framed, I'm telling you, it's the most exciting part of new construction. When you have the slab, people come in, they think it's too small, they don't think it's the right house. This is the first time that a client can come in, smell, touch, taste, and feel their own home, and it's very exciting. Yeah, and you're not kidding about the senses. You walk in here, and the first thing you notice is that smell of this wood that's here. Uh, and we mentioned that in the slab stage, most people think, there's no way, that they poured the slab wrong, my house is too small. Yeah. This is when they start to feel like some of the rooms may be too big. Yeah. And it, it, there is, there's so much to see here and we really want you to experience this. We've got Builder Trend is gonna make you aware and alert when this is going on in the process so you don't miss it. This process takes usually between anywhere, what, maybe three, seven days. It's a, it's a good process, um, but it happens very quickly and you have to make sure you get out there quick. Yeah, and we're in a unique area where we have, you know, unmatched Amish yeah. craftsmen who come yeah. out here. They do a phenomenal job as far as the quality, but then they do it so quick. They're so fast. They come out here and like you said, sometimes it can happen within one week. Uh, so you gotta plan your, your, your new build around making sure you can be there when it's being framed because it is a not, it's a non-miss on the schedule. And this process is gonna include doing things like uh, putting the windows in, putting the house under roof. All that's gonna happen in that short time frame and it's just such an exciting time. Yeah, framing is easily one of the top moments on the schedule. Gotta love it. If you want to know more about framing, don't forget we have lots of other shows that have this kind of information for it. We have one whole episode based totally on framing. So you can go find that on YouTube and of course find us on all of our social media venues. In those shows, you're gonna see all kinds of description. Luke, why don't you tell a little bit about what it ha does happen though? What are the members that we have in here? Yeah, there's a lot of parts and pieces. So why don't we just start from the bottom and work our way up real quick. So we have our bottom plate and that's what you're gonna find on most of the, the walls here. And it's a little different color because it is treated to be up against that concrete. And as we work our way up, we just have our common studs uh, and we move up along the wall. Then we run into two different ones. We have a top plate and a double top plate. Mm -hmm. And above that, that's when you get into your ceiling joists. Then you have rafters above that. That's the part that actually creates the roof pitches and the slopes. Uh, but then in between there, whenever we have a break in the wall, you'll see headers. Behind us, you can see a giant glue lamb that's picking up a lot of the support of the, the roof going into that kitchen space. Uh, those are just probably you know seven or eight of the framing members. There's a lot more in that show that you mentioned covers it in great detail. And we did mention too that we have the windows in here as well during the stage. Can you tell us a little bit more about the framing members for the window? Yeah, those, that's a critical area because we want to make sure there's no weight down on that window. So it adds a lot of framing members. We'll start this one from the top and work our way down. So the first thing you're going to come to is the header, which spans that weight over the top of the window and then down onto king studs, which are the ones on the outside of the header, and then jack or trimmer studs, which are the ones that support the weight of the header. And then it's also the one that a lot of your casing gets planted to. Then as we work our way down, you have the sill piece that the window sits down on. And below that, where there's some smaller, shorter studs, those are called cripple studs. And then it all ties back down to that plate, which ties into our foundation. Altogether, framing is a stage that you cannot miss. When you get your alerts on Builder Trend, make your plans, get out here to the site for the first chance to really smell what your new home is gonna feel like. So Luke, we just wrapped up one of the most exciting parts of building, and that's the frame stage. And we're gonna transition into what we call second roughs. 
not quite as exciting, but a lot of crucial work's getting done in this step. Yeah, so this rough mechanical stage, we uh, send in four different contractors. So that's going to be your HVAC, so heating, ventilation, and air conditioning, your plumbers, your electricians, and your audio video guys. So roughly, Luke, this process is going to take about three weeks on average. Obviously, it can vary a little bit depending on the floor plan. Right, and we want to send those guys in that order. So you start with the largest piece of equipment and then kind of go down from there. Uh, so the HVAC guys are first. It'll take them three to four days mm -hmm. to get everything roughed in. They set the furnace. They put in all the piping work that are needed for the returns and the supplies. Uh, they'll run any gas lines that need to be ran. Uh, and then they'll pull off and then that's when the plumbers come in. And they're going to do some something special for us. We like to use this manifold system for all direct shots to the water lines. Now, at, Bil at Granite Ridge Builders, we're always trying to get better, improve customer service, and really work on technology. So we may give some new customers other options in terms of manifold by doing a recirculating pump with faster water supplies to all the runs in the house. You guys got to call us for those details. Right. And then back to the manifold system. So what the plumbers do, they get that set up. They'll terminate it on each of those areas where there's sinks, toilets, and then they'll put some pipes through the roof too. So at this point, they'll, they'll uh, stick their, we call them vent stacks out to make sure that that plumbing works properly. So once the plumber finishes up, who's coming in next? Uh, the electricians. So that's when the electricians move in. And one of the things that we provide is our homeowners, because this is a very crucial stage it may not be one of the most exciting but it's one of the most important because when we cover all this up it's very difficult to change so you know they could walk through with their electricians make sure they get all the plugs in the right spots make sure it's set up for the TV you know in the garage or wherever they might want it to be uh, but they come in and it only takes them maybe two to three days to pull all the wire and they get all those plugs set exactly where, we, where the homeowners want yeah for me that stage it feels like one of the one of the moments early on where they get to customize the home in terms of making selections inside their new home right so once they finish up who's coming in next audio video guys and they're quick they only take about a half a day but again it's one of those areas where they talk to the homeowners communicate make sure that they get all the wiring that they want in place and as technology improves they're becoming more important step in this process so after this three-week period there's a lot of things that are going to get done that homeowners will never see again so how do we make sure that they have access to this later yeah and this is again one of those areas that we really pride ourselves on so during this rough stage before it gets covered up with all that drywall we'll go through and we'll take 50, 100 pictures, depending on what all is behind the walls. We want to make sure we have it documented, not only for our purposes, but for the homeowner's purposes or any homeowner down the line, because they want to do a remodel, they want to hang a picture, they want to just know what's in that wall in case they want to change anything. They have those pictures, which could save them a lot of money in the long run. And a lot of time, too. I think what I love about Builder Trend more than most is for the first time since technology's evolved, we're able to take your build job with you anywhere you go and make our job sites mobile. It's an, it's an amazing tool. You guys got to check out Builder Trend with Granite Ridge Builders. Well, Luke, when you're building a home, it seems like every step of the way, the excitement builds. And this is sure an exciting point. Now, when we pour the slab, people usually panic because they think their house looks really small. Mm -hmm. And it's funny because then it's framed and it feels much bigger. But the really funny part is when you get to drywall, it feels so much larger. Yeah, and the phase that we're entering in, you know, JR and I talked about the second reps. Now we're moving into kind of what I consider, you're starting to see some of those finished products. Uh, the drywall, prime, trim and paint phase is kind of what we call it and it goes in conjunction with the exterior that you and Kayla talked about. Drywall is exciting and it really takes a great artisan to do the drywall. Uh, it really takes, how many days would you say? Well, and that can depend on the weather. Mm -hmm. uh, so in the wintertime, we want to make sure that there's heat to the house. In the summertime, it can get too warm and things don't dry as quickly. So it can take as little as five days up to two weeks uh, because of that drying time. But we put three coats of mud and the house that we're standing in right now has two coats. It's got one more coat to go in. Then they'll lace the ceilings and do the final sanding before we move into that prime stage. And then after we've primed the walls, then we're going to hang the trim or plant the trim. Yep, plant the trim. That's when the trimmer will come in. He'll case the windows, install the doors, put the baseboard on. Uh, so he does that before the painter comes in. But the painter came in, he primed, and then painted the ceiling. So we do one coat of prime, but then they paint the ceiling with the finished coat at that time. Then the trimmer. Trimmer, depending on the size and scope, a house like this could take about two days. But if it's a house that has a lot of extra trim, mm -hmm. could take a week. And the trimmer would be the one, if you were going to have some lockers or some built-ins, they would be done at that stage. Yeah, so he does a lot of that customizable work that can be done. Uh, then, once the trimmer finishes up, then the painter comes back in. Uh, he was only here for one day when he mm -hmm. primed the house. Now he's going to come back in and he's going to be here for about a week when he starts to paint. 
And we use Sherwin-Williams for our paint. It's a nice high quality paint. That's another thing you get to select, of course. So you could do one color throughout, you could select different colors, but that is a fun thing to choose. Yeah, and we'll do paint or stain, whatever the customer wants. Uh, and they'll paint the outside of the house during this time too, a lot of times. And depending on the weather, if it's middle of winter, we'll hold off. But uh, they'll do the outside, which will complete that exterior elevation. And then they'll come in and like I said, they do about five days worth. They'll putty all the holes, do any caulking, uh, paint the trim, stain the trim, then they'll work on the walls and, and finish their stuff out. And with the trim and paint, this is really the phase where people get a glimpse of what their home is going to look like. Here's a few pictures of what that looks like. So Kayla, we're at the stage in this home. It's been framed. We've had our second rough, so the furnace is in. We've insulated. The inside has drywall, but we still have some work here on the outside. We're to the siding and the stone stage. We are, so this is gets really exciting. You're finally through those mechanical stages and seeing some color coming to life on, on the home. Now, we've already picked all these colors um, up front through uh, the design process. So this was done a couple months ago, and now we get to uh, remember again what everything was picked. And so um, up front, we've picked the siding style and the stone color and the mortar. Um, so it's really exciting to be able to see this without the stress of, oh, what should I do now? And Kayla, you can see here we have the stone sample that's on the house mm -hmm. and look how different it is. It is. So a big part of what makes those colors different is going to be that mortar color. Uh, so that makes a really huge difference. It's about 20 to 30 percent of what your eye sees is that. So depending on if you have stone or brick, uh, there's a little bit more or less mortar to that. And and so this is where it's really exciting to be able to see, um, you know, do you, are we going to be doing uh, the sill stone with the stone? Are we going to be putting it full height? And those are things that have been determined on the plan. And we have a couple more accent pieces with that too. And and the great thing about Granite Ridge Builders and our designers is when you're building your home, you're checking to see what the neighbors have on their mm -hmm. house, the different colors. So maybe there's a lot of homes going up at once mm -hmm. and some populars and different, some colors are really popular, different seasons, the grays or the blues. So we can make sure that your home isn't going to look just like your neighbors. Exactly. So we're going to change up the siding, maybe the trim color and do uh, little different things like that. Now, one question I get a call on all the time when the, the finished material goes on, we have the siding sometimes we have the stone mm -hmm. and with the siding what they're gonna do is install all the the trim so you have trim around your windows sometimes you have freeze boards the brackets that you see behind me and shutters and we get that call saying hey that's the wrong color um, so what we have out on the homes is a pre-primed uh, uh, engineered wood material so it comes out kind of a tan color because it's pre-primed and then we are going to paint that closer to the final time so uh, that is something that we uh, not to worry about uh, mm -hmm. and it's gonna come on um, like you can see here you have your uh, vinyl that's the white but all of that will be painted white eventually that you see is tan behind us. And this house is really a great example too of the low maintenance when it comes to the exterior of your home. You can Absolutely. see it's very minimal of what needs painted. Most of it is a vinyl even the shake so it's something you're not going to have to paint in a few years. Exactly and all of these things that we're picking is really important to think about how that ties in with the roof because the roof goes on first and so that's why we like to pick all of these options up front in the design studio. So come out and take a look. We'd love to design the exterior palette for your new home. So Elizabeth, we just got done talking about trim and drywall, and that's a fun part of the process. But when the building really comes to life is when we have flooring and cabinets. That's when I get so excited and I'm ready to move in at that point, even though we still have another process to go after that. I agree, and things seem to go really fast when you get to this stage. They do. So after we've done your trim and paint, that's when we put our flooring down mm -hmm. typically. So that would be your hard surface flooring, whether it be a tile or a vinyl plank like you're holding mm -hmm. here. Yep. And just a reminder, the great thing about this stages you've already selected all of these items so exactly. you're not making this, these decisions when you're showing up to the house. Absolutely so when it comes to flooring there's a lot of work that needs to be done when it comes to floor prep they're going to be spending um, a couple days or hours working on on that and then they have to lay the floor so that process can take up to a week or two depending on how much hard surface you have how much carpet and things like that so lots of different things going on there and then the fun one begins and that's when we're talking about cabinets. Yes that's when our cabinets are installed and that goes fairly quickly 
exactly. Within a couple of days, they'll have your cabinets in. And depending on your countertop, your countertop might be installed with your cabinets if you're doing a laminate countertop. Mm -hmm. If you're doing a solid surface like a granite or a quartz, they're going to have to measure then. They do. So then that will come along more in the finished product to do a hard surface countertop and backsplashes and things like that. But the cabinets, uh, there's a lot more that entails that than what you might think. Mm -hmm. There's separate pieces for crown molding, separate pieces for toe kick. They have several different um, items that you have your box cabinet, which looks great, um, but then to get those finishing touches right and to have the beautiful finished product, we take a lot of care in that and that goes into those couple days. And all of the cabinets in your home are completely custom. So these cabinets are measured for back in the frame stage. The cabinet company is going to come out, template, and measure to build these cabinets specific to your home. And like you mentioned with the flooring, everybody's already made these wonderful decisions. Mm -hmm. So this process is where it gets fun because when everybody goes to the 15,000 square foot showroom at Granite Ridge, we have all the samples to pick from. And that's where we put it all together with the cabinets and countertops. And then we see it come to life here. So come on out to Granite Ridge and we'd love to show you all of the options to get to this finished process. You know, Elizabeth, I really love these new cabinet colors. How Ooh, great is this? Kayla, we get to talk about probably the most important step in the process, and that's the finishing touches. Uh, people are always shocked at how much is going to get done in this last two to three week stage. Yeah. They walk in and think there's no way we're going to be able to accomplish it and we always get it done. So let's talk about a few of the things that are going to happen. Sounds good. So what usually happens after cabinets and flooring go in is the final um, HVAC contractors are going to come in. They're going to put registers on. They're going to um, put the furnace filter, do any last sealing. So a lot of things happen there to tighten up the home. They're also going to install all of the interior doors, mm -hmm. door handles, shower doors are going to come in at this stage, right? Yes, absolutely. And with that, the trim final, what they're going to do is any hard surface area, we're going to put the baseboard. So one difference between Granite Ridge is anywhere that there's hard surface, we leave that baseboard trim work off so that that way we don't have to have a scribe mold later, not knowing the thickness and things like that. So that's why we really like to put the baseboard on afterwards in this final stage for uh, the hard surface areas. Yeah, it makes a huge difference. It does. And in this stage, we're going to really light up the home, right? So all of the finished lighting's coming in all the beautiful light fixtures that they're going to pick with you early in the process. Don't forget switches and outlets with that electrical as Absolutely. well. Very important parts there. Uh, the last thing that we have was there are a couple more touches are going to be maybe backsplashes mm -hmm. if you have one. Plumbing fixtures, very important. We're going to get the sinks in, uh, bath fixtures, you're going to have your towel accessories, so your mirrors, all of that come in at the same time to really provide that amazing finished look. Before you move in, we're gonna clean your home. And then one wonderful thing that is about our Granite Ridge process is you're gonna have a final home tour and walk through with your project manager to explain everything about this home. And after we get done with all of that, we're gonna schedule the final closing, hand them the keys to their brand new home. Um, speaking of closing, I think we gotta end the show, right? Oh, okay, well, I guess we do, we're all late. right, okay. Well, I think we did it. I think we did too. I think we've done a great show that can show the entire process start to finish and really relieve people's worries and concerns about new construction. It's so exciting. I love this process. Yeah, like we said, I hope today we've communicated that building a custom home is fun and it's also made easy at Granite Ridge Builders. And now that we've talked about the finished product here, I bet you're ready to contact Choice Designs for window treatments, furnishings, rugs, all sorts of fun stuff to make the interiors even more special. And you get a really, really good decorator if you'd like to start from ground up, too. And we've shown you all of these steps, but your first step is to give us a call because we would love to sit down and talk to you about your new home. Yeah, and if you want to know more about Builder Trend or your personalized construction experience or really anything that sets the Grant Ridge homes apart from anybody else, I'd love to sit down and talk to you. And if you want to know a little bit more about magic, hey, of course, give me a call, right? Um, you know uh, what? Let's make you disappear again. Let's make it disappear. <laughs> hey, JR, would you go ahead and close for us? Absolutely. As always, guys, we want to thank you for spending part of your day with us. If you'd like to learn a little bit more about who we are, what we do, and why we do what we do so well, please just pick up the phone, give us a call, visit the website below, follow us on any of our social media platforms, but even better yet, guys, come in any one of our front doors so that we can welcome you guys home. Okay, good job. Yeah. You know what? I'm I think we got the air conditioning out of here, right? Yeah. Let's, let's yeah.